Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. First of all, thank you so much for being here tonight. As I imagine having this ordination anniversary mass, I expected it to be small, a spoken mass, uh, a gathering downstairs of, you know, maybe you know, 20 people or so, 25 people. And since it's become, uh, as I was realizing, it was becoming a little bit more than that, I realized I need to think of something to say. <laughs> some of you know the sense of foreboding when you have a wedding or an occasion, receive an award, and someone might ask you to say something. Well, so it is when you get ordained. And so uh, we are, are called to speak to others, not on our behalf, though, but on behalf of the Lord, which is why we seek the gifts of ordination. But this is really a cross in many ways, and so why I really feel like it's never fully, well-meaning, but never fully appropriate when someone is ordained to say congratulations to them, because it's like, congratulations, uh, even though you haven't received any kind of a prize, um, in fact, you have now the opportunity to lay down your life. And the appropriate response might simply be, however, praise God. Because we know that God has given gifts of the priesthood just for this purpose, uh, to build up the body of Christ, the church. And so that's what we celebrate today, the gift of the priesthood um, in general, but even as it pertains uh, to uh, thanks be to God, to me, um, on this 10th anniversary. Now, it also just happens to be the feast of St. Albert the Great, uh, solidifying St. Albert as my uh, patron. This wasn't intended at all, by, by the way, of Bishop Madden and Monsignor Steenson. They just said, well, you know, here are the two days that are convenient for us really to do this. It's this date and that date. And actually, this date is, is really probably better for us. And I looked at it, and without mentioning anything, said, yeah, that'll be just fine. <laughs> Almost like it's just God intended it. So, um, so it it's, makes some sense to uh, think about why St. Albert might be connected to this day. Um, I had a print, by the way, made up of those who helped plan my ordination, uh, a print by the artist Daniel Mitsui, and it was of St. Albert at his, as his study. And in the... Um, lower right-hand corner was a picture of St. Thomas Aquinas hitting an automaton with a bat. An automaton, for those who don't know, you children, that's basically a robot, like an early mechanical robot. Um, and so I looked into this and so I said, oh yeah, St. Albert had a, a robot and, and St. Thomas, he, he, you know, he made this automaton. St. Thomas was, was uh, weirded out by it and destroyed it. And I thought, gee, that doesn't reflect so well on my patron saint. But thankfully, I found out that it was just all uh, a legend. In fact, the truth <laughs> uh, reflects better on St. Albert. Because the reason why this became a legend is because St. Albert seemed to have an, a, a word, a fact, an answer for everything. And so with a little bit of a wink, this legend was made, he must have had this automaton that would spit out the answers he needed because no one could humanly possibly know so much. <laughs> and so, in other words, uh, if, if Jeopardy existed in the day of St. Albert, um, he would have won. So, uh, did I speak St. Thomas would have known so much? St. Albert, he was the one who knew so much about facts about the world, um, about creation, because he was a scientist. And he studied creation so thoroughly. But here's the thing. Uh, the reason why he would never, uh, uh, you know, the facts don't matter so much to him alone, bare facts, uh, mere facts. There are no brute facts, as Cornelius Van Til famously said, uh, which is why a winner of Jeopardy uh, is not necessarily an example of holiness. And so the reason why the facts of the world were important for St. Albert is he said, the whole world is theology because it proclaims the glory of God. That's why it's important to know about the world, so we can see the glory of God in it. So there are no brute facts, but we, if we interpret them 
through the lens of Christ, then they have meaning, then they point to the source of all goodness. And so St. Albert became a scribe of scripture in light of creation, which brings us to today's gospel passage. Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And so, uh, and earlier in this parable, we see this uh, leading up to this, this uh, the end of this uh, teaching of Jesus, uh, we have this picture of fishers who have a net and they throw out the fish that are inedible with those that can be eaten. And so it is for the kingdom of God. This is kind of like the parable of the wheat and the tares. You know, until the end, uh, there are those who are sanctified in the church and those not so much, but we don't really know their hearts. But so it is with those who bring forward the truth of the world. There's a lot of neutral truths uh, and neutral, uh, neutral knowledge that can be used for good and for bad. We don't always know the intentions of those who use it. Uh, but we can be discerners, though, of how to apply the knowledge that we have. And so St. Albert was the one who really brought forward Aristotle as a philosopher who was useful for the church. And so St. Albert passes on to St. Thomas, who famously used this as the base of much of his theology. So Aristotle himself was in a certain way old. He, he predates the church, but he was new because he was newly being discovered by the church. But yet he didn't take it uncritically. As a good scribe, who brings out of his treasures what is new and what is old, discerning what's good and what is bad. He actually wrote a treatise of all the errors of Aristotle. Uh, so here is a philosopher who did philosophy through the lens of faith. And, and so it is that we are, are called, any, any priest is called to do today as one who proclaims truth, um, whether uh, this is the, the modern scribe, who gives, uh, who are, were called to give sermons, uh, parsing what is good and bad from what is new and from what is old. And so it's important to, well, so let's consider this um, uh, further as a parallel uh, for our current world and where that brings us today. Now, St. Albert, uh, we, we can say, was one who was formed by his times even as he helped to form the times. Um, he was one who asked the questions of his day um, and gave answers in light of faith. Um, for example, this is uh, just one more example from, from science. Um, he uh, was able to pair faith and reason in such a way that gave true knowledge of scripture and creation. For example, um, he proclaimed, contrary to what was commonly believed, that, co that comets do, are not sent by God to announce the death of nobles. <laughs> he, made that, he made that clear to everyone. He also made it clear that uh, verse any kind of spiritualism uh, attached to creation, that um, as he renewed the science, as we really, uh, really pioneered the scientific method, that rocks don't have souls, and in fact show that there's really no evidence that they reproduce. <laughs> so, so faith and reason together, understanding creation in light of reason. Our faith is reasonable, um, and, but yet our, our, the facts do not contradict the faith. And so, don't we need proclamation like that of St. Albert today. Um, some of you have, uh, uh, most perhaps all of us have seen signs around the city which say, I believe in science and love is love. But what do we mean by science? <laughs> what do we mean by love? Could it be that in our modern world that faith and reason are becoming uncoupled? Even as we lose a, our sense of definition of what it means, or, or at least perhaps we're still working out anew uh, what is the definition of a man and a woman, what is marriage, and uh, truth 
determined by a show of hands. Um, and they were in a context of artificial intelligence. Now, if it, then we laugh that spirituality was infused into the understanding of rocks. Just watch how it's already beginning that people are seeing a, a mystical spiritual uh, reality within artificial intelligence as if there's a spiritual reality uh, with, within what we receive. Just, just watch how this will increase in our modern world. And so what do we want to do is see our current world in the light of faith. And so let's consider how this is happening. We, are, we already have done this in this context in our time. St. Albert helped to form his world because he was formed by it in his context. And likewise, any priest, while he hopes to help to form his community, he is formed by his community. And so the context that we have here, in which I've been formed over these tasks, last 10 years, has been this, this parish. And so I've hoped to have a hand in forming this parish, but as, as I'm called to bring forward the ward and the sacrament on behalf of the church, and likewise, what is new and what is old. But we've been given a context together, a context that's dr drawn you here, a context that I've received, which is that of the ordinary, and a church that, as we've defined it here, um, uh, really constitutes a new Oxford movement. As we bring forward the charism of St. John Henry Newman, who wanted to engage the modern world uh, with the questions of his time, but yet tethered to ancient moorings. And so our context in, here in the ordinariate is to, in the words of Bishop Lopes, to harvest the mature fruits of the Vatican Council. And so here we are called again to, to bring forward what is best out of what is new as well as what is old. And in light of this, the parish has, has grown, I hope, in depth, even as it's grown in numbers. And I say this, that this happened, as sometimes people observe this, it's happened in spite of me. Now, I say this without any false humility. I mean, I mean it when I say this happened in spite of me, uh, because I'm aware of my faults, and I'm also aware of grace. And what is the purpose of grace but to replace the old man, as St. Paul says, with the new? <laughs> and so in many ways, the gospel is about parsing the new and the old, even as grace does not replace nature, but transforms it. I pray that as that, that is happening to your priest, even as that is happening to us as a community as well. And so in light of this, I also attribute who we are to who you are, the benefactors, the gifts, the sweat uh, that you all have put into making this parish what it is, so that I can continue to be a priest to you. And in light of this as well, I must say that I, I was very gratified to hear that somebody, uh, the, of, who, a member of the newly formed Seven Sisters Ministry praying for the parish priest has said, when I make my holy hour, I pray not only Father, but I pray for his wife. Also, I just received a card, by the way, in the mail, giving thanks uh, from a prisoner, giving thanks to Abby and me for your vocations, plural. Even as in the Eastern Orthodox Church, it's often said that the, uh, the priest's wife is a vocation within a vocation, uh, the prospitida, as she's often referred to, um, uh, shares in a certain way in the grace of her husband. And so it was, our Lord had Mary who came to him and said, they have no wine, and brought his attention to the needs of the community. And so it was, uh, Peter, we know he was married, uh, even though his wife, traditionally known as Joanna, is not mentioned by name in the Gospels, traditionally, was martyred shortly before him. We do know that he was buried next to a woman. And so it is St. Francis had his St. Clair, and Pope Benedict XVI had by his side his, uh, his Ingrid. 
uh, who read his manuscripts, uh, served as his housekeeper, and was his closest confidant in his inner circle. And so my ministry, like all of them, is completed by my wife. And so it is, as a, as, a, as a nuclear family, but as a church family, what do we do? But we share in the ministry of the cross. Helped, assisted, aided by the Feast of Title that we have, of, uh, well, our title, that we, that we celebrate our Feast of Title, the Feast of the Holy Cross, Mount Calvary. Well, what do we do? Whenever we come here, we come to the foot of the cross. So we are all formed by this context, even as our words say above the altar here, I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me, which is, the, which is we're formed by these words as we say we lift up Christ in the beauty of holiness, and that is the context. That is the context, which is simply the cross. And so someone mentioned to me recently that, uh, that Father, you often mention the cross, which is uh, you know, an emphasis of yours, which is helpful to us. But I'd like to say, please, that's not my emphasis. That's simply preaching, period. As St. Paul said, I've determined to know nothing among you, to preach nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. To any, any other proclamation uh, is, is nothing, leads us nothing to nothing but deism or some other faith. But if we were to truly bring forward what is new and what is old to discern what is good and the bad, it is a stern from this lens completely. And so St. John Chrysostom, in light of this passage, says that what our Lord is telling us when he refers to the true scribe, every, uh, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven, is not just any kind of preaching, but gospel preaching, which is the preaching of the cross. And so it was at my ordination, I was called to lie cruciform um, before the altar, and that was at the basilica, just walking distance from here. That's where it all begins. That's where it all ends. And so our Lord, when uh, said uh, to Pilate, he said, I was sent to the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. This is the truth that St. Albert sought to bring forward as he understood creation. But what did Pilate say? He said, what is truth? <laughs> this is the question that is asked in every age, in every time. What do I see of this world that relates to the truth that is above? And so St. Albert said to this, uh, he says ultimately that this truth is in the cross, even as Pilate would soon witness this himself as the witness to love. St. Albert said, For there is nothing but the power of love which can lead the soul from things on earth to the lofty summit of heaven. And he said that the law and the prophets and our Lord's teaching, what is new and what is old, rests on this alone. This is the beginning and the end of all the gifts and the calling of God. It is the truth of the gospel and the purpose of of the priesthood for which we give thanks today.